Hey, you, Nina here. You are officially listening to Triggered Can We Play With That wherever you get your podcasts and you've stumbled upon a bonus episode. Hey, look at you. If you're watching us on YouTube, thanks for tuning in. And if you're not following me on Instagram at Drama Therapist Nina, now might be a good time to do that. You are going to be hearing today from Nancy Picard. We are going to be dishing. And let me tell you, I think this is probably one of the most succinct episodes I've ever had a guest come in and just be so clear. It is really obvious when someone has done their personal work, right? Uh, Just to be clear, not to say that people who are have more details or things like that have not done the work, but I do know that you are going to feel how clear Nancy is on her story. And of course, If you are owning your story and it's not owning you, less opportunities for you to be triggered and surprised by something that you did not know was there before. (laughs) So this episode is going to be great for those of you who are ready to explore what it is to be able to own your truth without oppressing yourself and without expecting someone else to give it to you. Ooh, there was a little bit of a twist there. In essence, Nancy's going to talk to you about what it is to be self-referenced versus other referenced. And if none of this is clear to you and you were like, Nina, what is it that we're going to be exploring on Triggered? Can we play with that? I am inviting you to explore the story that Nancy titled, Worthiness is an Inside Job. So. If that sickles you fancy, that is what we're going to be exploring today. There's going to be lots of little knowledge dropped, right? Little knowledge bombs dropped. So my invitation is for you to grab a journal or a really good friend to dialogue with about what comes up for you in this episode. Of course, we're not going to be able to cover everything, but we will be able to cover at least one facet to help us explore this kind of material. If you are ready, and of course, you know that I am curious. Are you ready to play? Welcome to Triggered. Can we play with that? You know that moment when your emotions ramp up in an instant, leaving you feeling helpless, frozen, or out of control? In that moment, you've been emotionally hijacked, the very definition of triggered. And I want to ask you, can we play with that? I'm Nina L. Garcia, drama therapist and empowerment coach of Houston Creative Arts Therapy. Join me as we discover ways to empower you and the people who mean the most to you to transform hard conversations into teachable moments. Triggered. Real playful. Real respectful. Real empowered. Let's take a breath. Hmm. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nina. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm great. Okay, wonderful. (laughs) Folks listening in, I've got Nancy Picard here, as I told you in the intro. And of course, you know, we start every episode by setting an intention, right? We want to have a human to human conversation to try to transform a hard conversation into at least one teachable moment, if not multiple teachable moments. Nancy, do you consent to going into that potentially sticky, potentially uncomfortable territory with me? I do. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. (laughs) So let's go into it. I like for my guest, Nancy, to sort of share about just the roles and identities that you feel are present with you just in this moment, right? What, what jumps out to you? What stands out to you in this moment? Mm -hmm. Human, female, coach, Mm -hmm. um, speaker, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All all of the above. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing these bits. And can we do an internal weather check? And we're about to go into your story, which you have titled worthiness is an inside job. And you talk about self-referenced versus other referenced. I don't even want to get into it yet because I want you to be able to share your story in a nutshell. But before we do, what is your internal weather like right now? It's pretty sunny. <laughs> pretty sunny. Okay. <laughs> pretty sunny. I know you mentioned you have told this story before, right? So it's not something that is expressly new to you. And for everyone listening in, of course, we are all about empowerment, right? So we're trying to move from a powered and oppressive dynamic to share what is it like to honor multiple truths, even if it harmed us, even if it wasn't working for us, even if we disagreed with it. What are the multiple truths that are present in this human experience? So Without further ado, worthiness is an inside job. 
Take it away, Nancy. So um, I've learned a lot of lessons and I'd have to say that when people are going through drama and having drama and trauma in their life, when you can get to a place where you can take a breath and look to see what are the lessons I need to learn here? What does the universe want me to know? That's what happened to me. So I was married, you know, 26 years, really happy, loved my life, loved my family, loved my now Mm ex-husband and my whole marriage fell apart. And when it fell apart, I fell apart. And I really didn't have the tools or the wherewithal that I have now on how to navigate that. Like my future as I knew it was gone and I really didn't have next steps. So fast forward, I was engaged to another man. We were living together. And when that fell apart, I realized, wait, there's something I'm not learning here. What's that the universe on? wants me to know, and I need to do the inner work, and I need to figure this out because I really don't want to be here again. Like it's a really crappy place to be, and and um, really the takeaway of what I learned was that I was very other referenced. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. as long as the men in my life thought I was worthy, mm-hmm. I was worthy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I always thought I was so like on it because I was half of a whole, which was a real disservice because we are all whole by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So my work was the inner work to become self-referred, to recognize that I am worthy just because I'm on this earth. And so are all of us. Mm -hmm. I don't need to prove anything. I'm not worthy because of my material things. I'm not worthy because other people think I'm worthy. Mm -hmm. I'm not worthy because of my degrees or my acquisitions, nothing. I'm worthy just because I'm on this earth. And then it becomes the inside job of staying in integrity with what you say you're going to do, honoring Mm -hmm. yourself, trusting yourself, making yourself a priority, Mm -hmm. uncovering the disempowering beliefs that are actually making you feel unworthy. Mm. So that's the work. Oh, Nancy, I think, can my, my hat is off to you. I am, <laughs> that is probably the most succinct, clear story anyone has ever shared on this podcast, <laughs> which is, is right. Just so we're clear out there listeners, right? Not to say it's better or worse, but, but oh my gosh, did we just hit so many points that we're about to explore and you did boom, boom, boom. It is so clear. You have done the work. Yes. Yeah, so you've done the work. <laughs> Okay. So may I reflect on some bits that you've shared already? Mm-hmm. So the, of, of the many parts that you shared, one of the first bits that, that I sort of latched onto also because I have experienced divorce myself. And when I work with clients who've experienced divorce, right? Th- there is this very common narrative of, I knew how to get to marriage. I thought I knew what I was supposed to do, but then when it fell apart, I realized I had no story for next steps. Right. And for so many people, it's like, oh, well, same story. I'll just find someone else. I'll just get married again. And it's not even like a conscious, that's what I'm going to do thing. It's like, we fall right into the story that we've been fed. Right. How to fix the picture. I needed Mm -hmm. to fix the picture. I needed that that next man. I needed to be married. I needed to fix the picture. Yes. What an image audience out there, get out your journals because right there was boom right there. (laughs) Okay. It was the fixing the picture. How many of us have been raised with a certain picture? And if something's off in that picture, you've got to fix it. You've got to fix it. Instead of saying, wait a minute, is this even the picture that I want? Right. So you get to this second uh, engagement, right? And then you said before, I think before you even married, did I hear that right? With the second guy? Yeah. We, okay. we, we weren't getting married. We, okay. we, were, that's where we were. okay. I hear this. And then you said, and then you, you paused and you were like, wait a minute, I need to do some work on this, right? I need to figure out what's going on with me. The image that I often offer with that is it's like being on a merry-go-round. And if you don't realize it, you will keep getting on the merry-go-round right. over and over again. When do we exit? When do we say it's time to get off the merry-go-round? But if you are beautiful next part that you shared, if you are other referenced, you are still waiting for someone else to make it happen, to fix it, to make it right. Instead of 
when you flip the script, just as you geniusly shared with us, right? That moving from disempowered to a much more empowered space, we do that personal work to see what is even possible entering this space of what, what is possible beyond the image that we may have been fed that really it's a box. It keeps us right. like What's the new paradigm? How do I want a relationship to look going forward and how do I want to be in that relationship? So the first relationship for me mm. is on me, you know, mm. that's the first relationship. And so write that down folks. <laughs> what? I was just telling our audience, I was like, write it down. Right. I like to remind so them. That they're that's where the work is. Even when I get clients that come to me and they want to get a man or, you know, a woman, or they want to be in a relationship and they want to get married and the whole thing, number one, let's really look at the paradigm of relationship and what do you really want? And then number two, let's stop dating for a little while so that you can become the person that you want to attract. You have to first become it. And then you can mirror it and bring them in. I always feel like it's where's Waldo and the guy has left the building and he's on his way, but he's not going to show up until you've done your inner work and you are actually ready to stop being a people pleaser and a conflict avoider and how to put yourself first and how to set healthy boundaries and actually rewrite the paradigm of what you think a relationship needs to look like. Rewrite that paradigm, folks. <laughs> Nancy, <it>. we just, <laughs> I mean, Listen, y'all, with so much love and so much compassion, we just called out so many parts, right? The people pleaser part, the part, I mean, I, you just, you just went through them, right? Y'all go back 10 seconds and listen to that <laughs> because it is gold. But these are the pieces that if we don't stop to do that personal work and really say, Hey, I need to actually prioritize my relationship with myself. Right. Then what continues to ripple out is the junk that is there, the boxes that have been there to limit us, our limitations and expectations that let's face it may never be met because we're not actually the person who's even ready for that story yet. As you said, right. We're right. not even that person yet. Right. Oh we're God. still living what our parents thought we should be, what society thought we should be, what the little inner child in us thought we should be. You know, we all have that dream of what we think of relationship parenting motherhood everything should look like and that's what trips us up we don't even know if, unless you really stop and do the work you don't really even know what you want the relationship to look like mm. i don't know how many people as i'm sure in your office as well have walked in and said three years down the line, 10 years down the line, 20, 30, 40 years down the line that they're now trying to do the work, but they felt that something was off. They thought, I, I just felt like I should have, I should, and I say right there, that's the flag that I, one of the flags of many, right? But one of the flags that I want people to start clocking when they're as young as possible, right? As early on as possible is the should. Right start flagging the word should. Is that really how you intend to show up? And is it really benefiting you as a human being? Or are you trying to work to fit a narrative that is not even your story? It's not even going to benefit you. Yeah, I agree. I also, I have a lot of young, I work with a lot of 30 year old women. Beautiful. Um, and it's not just their internal clock. It's their family's internal clock. Oh, yeah. you know, every time they see their relatives, oh, you're not married yet? Mm -hmm. You know, so-and-so is married, blah, 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 blah. And it's, the it's pressure. I mean, it's such pressure and it makes them feel unworthy. You know, how can you feel worthy when your family's judging your worth, not on your profession, not on the goodness of your soul, but on, are you married with children or not? Oh my gosh. You know, this is a, what I'm about to say, I recognize everyone and I recognize Nancy is a, we could do a whole episode on it. But even when I hear you say that, right, the pressure of that and the, and it's, it's their story now that they're fitting this person into, right? This is our expectation. Why aren't you fitting into the story? If I just tell you enough times, why aren't you married? Why don't you have children? Why right? Then maybe you'll fit into the story and I'll feel more comfortable, right? right. Even with all of that, what I will often share with people is the reality that this is now an objectification of the individual, not a personification of the individual. Yeah. They see you as a character in a story, not as a person living a life. Right. Mm. 
Good stuff. Nancy, what, if someone is out there listening to this, it's resonating with them, they're feeling good. They're like, yes. What is the number one reason why you would say they should reach out to you? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? Who's this person? You know, what's interesting is that um, I'm really good at what I do. I love it when I hear confidence like that. I'm very compassionate, but I'm really like, I'm, I used to be a personal trainer. All right. So for 16 years, so I like take no prisoners. I will hold people accountable. And that's the only way to get to where you want to go. So Mm. I'm compassionate, but I really do call you out on your stuff. And I hold you accountable. I hold you in integrity with what you say you're going to do. So like you can't come show up each week having not done it. I won't keep you and as a client. And so there's like a little, they love it, but I'm, I'm tough. I'm, I'm, I'm tough, but I'm, I'm not tougher on anybody than I am on myself. So I hold myself in integrity so that I can hold others in integrity. Talk my walk. I use fear as a driving force for change, and I am always changing and always growing, and that's what I want for my clients as well. This is beautiful. Y'all, if, just in case that was not clear, and it was pretty clear, <laughs> right? We're talking if you're ready to engage authentically with yourself, if you are ready to do the work, if you are growth-oriented is something I heard. Nancy, fix this if I get it wrong, right? Um, all if right. Right, if you're ready to be in alignment, um, right? To really be your most vibrant self. I mean, if you're ready to do these things, Nancy is going to be there to hold you accountable for that next step of of really what I refer to as courageous existence, right? To dare to exist as you are and as you, all you can be, not as what someone has cast. And accepting yourself as you are with your awesomeness and your flossomeness, you know, everything. (laughs) Love that. I want that on a shirt. My awesomeness and my flossomeness. Love me. Yeah, because we're uh, so hard on ourselves. And so, you know, we don't need to be. We need to be our best cheerleaders. We need to hold ourselves in warm regard while we hold other people in warm regard. That's what I call being relational. And that's what I want for my clients. And then the other thing is, is that I'm a shadow coach. So I help people uncover the very disempowering beliefs and commitments from their childhood that they're not even aware of, but those are what's keeping them stuck and held back. And so when they uncover that, they're like, oh my God, I can connect the dots to like my whole life. I can see how, what it's cost me and what it did for me, but how it's costing me now. And so, you know, adaptive as a child is maladaptive as an adult. And I help them work on that adaptive as a child, maybe maladaptive as an adult. Mm -hmm. So many parts of us that develop as a child to protect us, right? Short-term, right? Emotions are really good at thinking short-term, but when they start using the same blueprint for everything in your life and that becomes the blueprint, you lose flexibility. You start getting, right? You boxing in, the rigidity sets in and you lose ability to really be the most vibrant individual that you have capacity to be. Yeah, you're stuck. You stalk your resistance. You think, oh, that's not me. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. It's not my time. I'm too old. I'm too young. All of these beliefs and stories we have about ourselves. It's time to flip the script and rewrite that paradigm as you right. said in your words. Nancy, 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 where can people find you? <laughs> uh, well, the best way to find me is on my website, nancypicardlifecoach.com. Um, I do a free discovery call, which I'm sure you probably do too. And um, yeah, I'm on social media everywhere. Nancy Picard Life Coach, Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook and Clubhouse and, you know, all of the hot spots that we're all at. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. All of those are going to be in the show notes, folks. So you don't have to worry about rewinding. It is going to be there in the show notes. And you know, one of the, before we officially close the episode, Nancy, I really like to ask, you know, we very intentionally set out to go through hard territory, right? To transform it into teachable moments. Do you feel like we succeeded? What are you sitting with? In this conversation or in my life, which, which? (laughs) In this conversation, we won't go into, of course. Uh, Yeah. I think that you have to recognize that you know, shit's going to happen, right? And instead of having it happen 
to you when you can take a breath and see and wonder and be curious about how it's happening for you, then you can do the work. And it's not always an immediate, it's, you know, we're all reactive. It's, we're all gonna have that reaction. We're all gonna be triggered, but then you get to stop and ask yourself, well, you know, what am I making this mean about me? And how can I look at this differently? And so eventually, if you just observe what's happening, you can respond instead of react. And that's what we want to do. We want to short circuit that reaction and get to the response. Ooh, y'all know all my triggered listeners, right? What are we always talking about with triggers? You are reacting to something bigger and older than the moment instead of responding to what is actually present in the right. moment. Right, right. Oh my goodness. One of the lines, what sticks with me is there's so many beautiful things that you have shared that are so, so effective, so clear. There was this last line that you just shared of what is, let me make sure I get this right. Instead of looking at it as what is happening to me, start asking yourself, what is happening for you? Yeah. Why is this happening? What's the lesson here? Freaking gold. <laughs> gold. I will be writing that on my mirror this week. That okay. will be good. <laughs> You can use it. Oh, okay. We have reached the end. The last thing I will ask of you is, what are you noticing about your internal weather now? Uh, still feels good. It was good then. It's good now. Good then. Good love now. The conversations. It's always, it's, you know, if you can do one thing that's going to help one person, then the conversation is worthwhile. And this is courageous conversation. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you so much for being here, Nancy Picard. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So that is what we planned for today, folks. Thank you so much for taking a minute to explore your triggers as a human being. And of course, if this has been helpful for you, please share the episode. It is one of the best things you can do to get the dialogue going on transforming hard conversations into teachable moments, right? On getting a hold of your triggers, on learning how to respond instead of react, right? There's so, so many good things that we're taking from today's episode. Take those things, and after you've shared it, because this may have been the episode that did it for you, you can also give us that five-star review, but say it was Nancy Picard's episode that did it for me. Go listen to that episode, right? That's you reaching out to that person who needs to hear this, and they don't, need, they don't know that they need it yet until they see you having said it, okay? So thank you all for listening, of course, and you know what I leave you all with. Stay curious. Stay curious.